Greetings, Game Cola faithful, and welcome to the Game Cola podcast. This is podcast number 136, and I am your host and podcast commander, Joseph Martin. I'm Alex the Jetty Jedrzak, your editor in chief. I'm Diana Gray. I write things and uh, do other stuff, and yeah, it's exciting. I'm Anna Bernarski. Game Cola is a social media trash queen, and also my computer decided it didn't want to do things for a second. Always a good choice, and always a good time for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, we went in reverse <laughs> alphabetical <laughs> order, and I'm very scared. You stopped and you left it. You just said your name. That's how I do it now. That's how we've been doing it. Of, as of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. Was I? Were you looking for? And I, now I'm joined yeah, yeah, yeah. by. That is that what you were you looking, looking for? I'm pretty sure yeah, I've the gone between the have, two. I usually jump in, but my computer decided not today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I guess I'm going next. I wasn't ready, hadn't thought of what to say, but here we go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a podcast where we talk about video games and not our introduction order. <laughs> That's a lie. Yes, we talk um, about that all the time. <laughs> Um, Jetty, let's go in reverse alphabetical order again. What did you want to talk about a video game today? An update yes. to a video game that you've been telling us about for the past few podcasts. Think and I'm very funny. excited because I thought this story was over, closed, and done, but we've got a secret season six yeah, on our yeah. hands. Uh, and a movie. Um, but uh, <laughs> yes, so a follow up um, to longtime podcast listeners will remember from a few months ago. <laughs> Uh, when I talked about <laughs> Little Dragon's Cafe and my grand disappointment in uh, the lack of any sort of <laughs> purpose <laughs> of playing the game. Um, the part where the best way to play the game was to avoid playing mm-hmm. the game. Yeah, um, actually, hold on. The, the the premise, as I remember, was that you have a cafe that you have to take care of because your mom got sick. And a guy was like, hey, your mom's sick. You need to take care of the cafe. And you're like, why don't you help me? And it's like, I'm just going to stand here and look at your sleeping mother. And they're like, that's cool. And then you try to run the cafe and you have to go on adventures with your dragon to make the cafe better. But then you learn that if you make the cafe better, it just gets harder. And the best way to win the game is to just not take care of the cafe and go out and adventures with your dragon and see because if you have a bad cafe then everybody just expects it to be a bad cafe and it goes okay yeah, basically and see i always said there's like several things that are missing is like okay maybe if you could actually like if you had more involvement like setting prices and stuff and like uh what you put in your uh, menu would actually like affect how much you make and like some kind of money management and that kind of thing um maybe some rpg elements and so on what are you talking about there's a dragon yeah, uh-huh. i know the best rpg <laughs> element um and then i stumbled across marinian tavern story patty and the hungry god okay so jay you've tricked us because this sounds like a completely different video <laughs> it game it is in fact a completely different video game and you tricked me but i'm gonna discuss both the merits and shortcomings of each <laughs> okay because bamboozled. you know i i said to myself okay this is gonna be great you know it, it looks like it's gonna have all the things that i was missing in the other one like there's actual like prices and stuff there's more of a focus on like uh going out and fighting things because it's more of an rpg like it has a turn-based combat system um i was excited to purchase it on sale on uh, nintendo switch and uh (sighs) i almost like little dragon's cafe better oh (gasps) no yeah like i'm realizing all the i'm realizing all the things that it did right as i'm playing this and just thinking like wow there's nothing going on in this game. Like, there's turn-based combat, but, like, it's the most pointless. It literally has both an auto-attack feature and a speed-up feature. And you just click uh, ZL and R, and it just auto-battles for you at one and a half times speed. And it's like, there, there's no threat here. There's no reason for these battles. Also, battling doesn't level you up. Eating levels you up, and fighting gets you ingredients. Which, like, in hmm. in a way, it's like, okay, that's cute in concept, but, like, everything takes forever. Like, you spend half an hour going through, like, a dungeon, of which 
there's only one available to you at the beginning of the game, and you have to play like several hours through this same dungeon repeatedly to get access to like another dungeon and so on. And like all the elements are like slowly introduced so slowly that it just kind of kills the game. And like each day is separated out into I go on an adventure and then I go back and I cook, but oh, I need to like figure out the recipes and I need to buy ingredients that I'm missing. And so you spend like another half hour just making the food. And then finally you open your shop and there's like a five second cut scene of plate clinking noises while it like pans over your restaurant with like people sitting there. And that's it. Just like repeat that eternally. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been looking back and being like, wow, you know, Little Dragon Cafe was actually kind of fun. Uh, as much as I didn't appreciate the uh, the unique graphics at the time you know it was charming it did attempt to have some story elements and as much as there was a lot of like oh i have to run around and gather the stuff it it somehow was still not as much of a grind as this you still sound conflicted i just want to play a good game (laughs) and somehow like two for two for different reasons they were both uh disappointments I want to run a cafe. I'm real sorry, Jetty. <laughs> that sounds... <laughs> There's yeah. got to be a good cafe game out there somewhere. So that was my update on Little Dragon's Cafe. I'm somehow now reconsidering uh, my my poor review that I gave of Little Dragon's Cafe. Good update. Good update. <laughs> wow. Aren't we... Uh, now that really put me in high spirits for a great energy podcast. Save it. Man, the sound of jetty's hopes and dreams just shattering (laughs) um i played a video game i actually played many video games this month which is kind of weird it's like at least four depending on like it sort of depends on how much of playtime you require for the bottom threshold of playing a video game um one of the big ones that i spent a lot of this month playing was pokemon masters the new mobile game from the Pokemon Company, if you couldn't guess. Are you sure? I feel like we may need to double check that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't think anybody else here has played it, but is anybody else like familiar with it? Like, has have you heard anyone talking about it it's or anything? I've phone. seen the ads for it. I have seen people discussing it on the Game Cola Discord. Well, yes, that was mostly me and <laughs> Brandon, I think. And uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. but jo- Joseph, I'm trying um, to convince the listeners to join us on Discord. That's later in the podcast, Jetty. But we can bring it up now. Just say, <laughs> "Hey, join us on Discord." It's We're... a tie-in. It's a clever tie-in. But you can literally talk to us. Our fans are talking to us about Pokemon Masters or whatever you said. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon Masters. Whatever game we were just talking about is a, what they, they called it a free-to-start mobile game, which sounded scary, Yeah, right? It sounds like, I think Mario Run was kind of like that, where, like, the first few levels were free, but then you had to buy yeah. a lot of the levels. So far, I have not found the part where the start ends, which is a good <laughs> sign, I guess. I mean, I finished the story mode that they've released up to this point, and I'm curious to see if next month, where I think the timer goes down, or maybe it's already gone off. I haven't actually played it in a couple of days because I got distracted by other video games. But um, the interesting thing so far is that obviously you can pay real money for this video game. But as far as I can tell, paying real money doesn't actually help you very much in the video game. Ah, okay. <laughs> Which I don't know if that's ethical or just a bad design decision. <laughs> I don't know which is being motivated here. So basically, um, it's one of those games where you get, like, characters. So you, like, put gems into a machine, and you get a character, and it has three to five stars. And you use the characters in Pokemon battles. So it's a gacha game. Yes. But that the ca- okay. characters are the only thing that you can spend money on. Spend real money on. There's other items that you yeah. can get with coins, but they don't... You don't spend. You can't spend money to get that currency. It's completely so separate. What is your question? So when you're when you're buying, you're spending the gacha with with the gems. Do they say anywhere what the odds are 
of yes. getting. Oh, they have okay. very detailed odds. Yeah, because that's that's funny. Not to, you know, as I usually do, turn the podcast back towards the law for a minute. Uh, <laughs> but to turn the podcast back towards the law for a minute, <laughs> I'm actually writing my big article for law school on loot boxes and whether they're gambling and all that good stuff. And this actually is an issue. Um, the gotcha games, the FTC just had a meeting on it and they are forcing, they're not forcing Nintendo and Microsoft mm-hmm. and Sony, I think came up together and were like, if you have loot boxes and games, you have to disclose the odds for them. Now you're required to. Yeah. I think so I was wondering if this one complied with that. Yes, it did. And I think it's part of it is like future proofing. Like I think the reason if they came out, if they were the ones that came out and said it, it was because they knew that someone was going to make that rule at some point, and they just wanted, oh, yeah. they want to future-proof their game. So everything... All this of, has been coming for a while. Yeah, so all of the odds are very clearly displayed. Like, it tells you the rates of both getting a certain type of star, and then it also tells you the rates of each character within that, right? So it'll tell okay. you that, like, each... You have, like, a 1.5 or something percent chance for any particular five-star character. And then they also have ones where you have a higher chance of getting a particular five-star character out of the five-star characters, and it shows you the odds for that, like how it changes between each, which gotcha machine, I guess, in the analogy, uh, you could use. Also, real quick side note, is gotcha like a a word that means something in another language, or is it literally just a got, like, gotcha? Because I always thought it was the latter, but now I'm not so sure. (laughs) Yeah, no, it comes from the actual physical machines in Japan. Mm-hmm. But um, what were they named after? So you, you like, turn the little dial, and the thing falls out, and it goes, gacha! And then so you, it's an onomatopoeia? Yeah. yeah, and then you open it up, and it goes, mm-hmm. boom! <laughs> yeah. I always thought, <laughs> when I was, palm. up until very recently, I had never questioned my childhood belief that it was a gotcha, because you got something. So it's, I got, oh I gotcha. Yeah, no, it's um. So I know you said you wanted to compare this to to Fire Emblem. Is that where you wanted to? Well, I, I wanted to compare to it to another game of its type, and that's the only one that I know of that anybody here has played. Yeah, because I mean, that's exactly how Fire Emblem Heroes does it. So in Fire Emblem Heroes, can you spend money on things other than the characters? In Fire Emblem Heroes, you buy orbs. And also you can buy other things, but most people just buy orbs, which you can use to summon the heroes. So similar to how the gems work in, in the Pokemon game, I believe, based okay. on what I've seen. So so yeah, it's basically the same. So the thing is that in the Pokemon game, you get a ton of, part of this maybe because it's the early part of the game, but you get a decent amount of gems just by like playing the video game. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Fire Emblem is the same way. Okay. Like, I'm sitting on a huge pile of orbs right now because, like, God, it must have been, like, over the summer or, like, in the spring or something. Um, they released a shirtless Ryoma, and I had to have him. So I played through every stage that I could and got as many orbs as I could. It turns out I got way too many because I ended up getting him, like, fairly quickly. I think I spent, like, 120 orbs or so to get him so now i have like 500 orbs for no reason <laughs> so have you have you spent money on, on no. the, you haven't and i haven't spent money no. on pokemon masters either and i will and i'm not going to say that there aren't parts that are grindy because there are but as far as i could tell you can't spend money to fix that right mm. you can use the the gachapon mechanic to get characters that are more powerful but they're not so much more powerful that they're that helpful to beating the game. Yeah. And you can't spend any money to make your characters stronger faster. The only thing that spending money gets you is stronger characters and maybe stronger sync moves, which are basically like Z moves, which are just like mm-hmm. super power things. But like, for the most part, that's not going to win you any of the matches that you're, that you're struggling with. So I'm not yeah. quite sure what the, the strategy is there. Playing through the story mode got me plenty of gems. It's 300 per uh, character. Which is, I think, three dollars basically. Um, I mean, if you, if I'm going to be frank, I think the reason. No, you're and, Diana. Okay. <sighs> um, I I think the reason, and I don't think they could have been thinking about this as far back as Fire Emblem Heroes, but maybe they were. There, there's been a bill introduced to completely ban 
loot boxes and microtransactions. Wow. Um, and if it goes through, then obviously that's going to change a lot of how we do this kind of thing. So I think maybe they wanted to incorporate it in such a way that if it does get taken out, then it's not the end of the world. I, it's possible. I guess, yeah. I mean, part of it is, like, when you're playing through the story mode, each time it says, like, these are the types of Pokemon that'll be useful for this set of battles. And each time, up through most of the story mode, because you also get sync, they call them sync pairs, because it's a character from the Pokemon series and a Pokemon. And mm-hmm. they always give you one of the principal type that you need for the next section. And it's like, this isn't encouraging me to spend money. I don't understand. <laughs> where's the pressure yeah. for me to spend money and again i don't and i don't want to make it sound like i think that they had an altruistic take on it because it's either they didn't plan it very well or my other suspicion is that the point of this game is not to get money out of you that much i mean obviously if you're willing to spend money they will gladly take it but i think the point of this game is to be essentially marketing for the one part of the Pokemon series that was not marketed by Pokemon Go, which is all of the characters from all the stories of all the video games. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. I think uh, Heroes functions in somewhat of the same way, but slightly different, because we didn't get, you know, Three Houses characters... Until after the game came out? Don't quote me on that, because I'm not sure if the first wave of them may have come out right before the story came out. But the second wave of uh, Three Houses characters definitely didn't come out until afterwards. So they kind of keep the hype going in Heroes. And then they bring back people from, like, older games, too, which people are big fans of. So in the Heroes games, are there a lot of parts where you're just, like, having social interactions with the characters? Um... Sometimes, like, the way it works is you get them at a certain star level, um, you can level them up and also unlock potential, which gets them increased star levels. So, like, I can make a four star into a five star by spending a certain amount of gems that I have. We have, there's and a mechanic once, like that in Masters too. Yeah, I, don't I, fi- know if it's I identical. figured. I'm pretty sure it's the same basic game, just a reskin for Pokemon, um, which is fine. I don't care. And then once you get them to max level at five stars, then they have a conversation with you. And it's just like, you know, a cute little couple sentence like, thanks for working really hard. You're super cool. We love you kind of thing. And you're like, thanks. That's pretty cool. Okay. But yeah, that's basically how it works. Pokemon Masters is entirely different in this respect. (laughs) Do you get more more interaction? It is almost exclusively interactions. Oh, that's... There's yeah, I mean, so much. You get... Anytime you go into the hub world, you have like five potential interactions with the characters that oh, you can that's... have. Yeah, that's and of... every time you get a new character, you get unlock a little cutscene that you have with them where you can like you have a dialogue with them where you choose, you know, one of two options that give oh, you the so exact cool. same result. But you have like a little conversation and you get like ten gems from each of those. So they're like that's incentivizing awesome. you to actually do it. Yeah, no, Heroes is like So, like, that. this whole game is about having these conversations with these characters. Like, that is the whole conceit of this. Don't make me pick this game up, Joe. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have I mean, space it's, on my phone for it. <laughs> it is free. But I'm just saying, like, I think, like, that is here for you. The reward, right, is, is getting to have this interaction with the characters. The conceit of Pokemon Masters is that talking with the characters is, like, part of the gameplay. They really want you to establish emotional connections to it. Whereas in Fire Emblem, they expect you to already have emotional connections, I bet. Yeah, that's definitely true. That is a driving force for you to continue. Rather than in Pokemon Masters, you are incentivized to interact with the characters. Because you'll talk to them and they'll give you items sometimes. So you're you're really incentivized... Is definitely more focused on the gameplay based on what you're sound. Or what I you're mean, and there is Pokemon. gameplay. There is a decent amount yeah, of yeah, gameplay, yeah, yeah. but like there is a huge emphasis on character interactions, and they're all like, that's "Wow, you're such a good person, player character." Oh, that's nice. I could see your potential from a mile away, and you're just the best. And even though we literally just met, I trust you with my life. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and you're my best friend. 
along with all 50 of these other people who are your best friend. <laughs> and then after Pokemon defeats the eight Pokemon masters, you go to <laughs> Professor Oak's castle. Yep, that's it. Got it. You got it, Jetty. You got it in one. So it's just been, it's been an interesting experience. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be at all. And again, I don't think it's out of altruism. I think it is out of this ulterior motive of getting marketing. you to, yeah, marketing. Like Pokemon, again, I, I, I agree. I, I'm not dropping this. Pokemon is trying to be a lifestyle brand. And once it saw what it could get with Pokemon Go, it has this cultural reach and it wants to pull everyone in to all of the content of the Pokemon Honestly, I franchise. would accept Pokemon as my lifestyle brand. <laughs> I would be totally fine with it. Also, I, I I make all of these claims about this insidious nature of it. I do all, interact with the Pokemon brand pretty much daily. Yes. <laughs> I'm not on a high horse about it, is what, is what I'm saying. <laughs> they got me. It's too late for me now. Save yourselves. No. I could talk a lot more about Pokemon Masters, but I think we should save it for future podcasts if people have questions about it. Unless any of you have questions about it right now. Those were my main questions, actually. Did you get my Mega Man joke? <laughs> Where? <gasps> what? <laughs> Joe, of all people, I Wait, thought... Did you really not? I thought I mean, you would like my Pokemon joke. Is that what that was? You defeat yes. the eight Pokemon Masters and then you go to <laughs> Professor X's Oh, X's okay. Castle. I thought you were just saying something weird about Pokemon, <laughs> like the gym, the eight gym leaders, and then no. a castle, like, in fi- I thought you were making a joke with, like, Fire Emblem wow. with the castle. I got a Mega Man joke that Joe didn't. <laughs> I don't think that that ca- Pokemon... <laughs> I That's got just the thing. Don't worry. The thing is, is that Pokemon is a thing that I normally say in day to day life. Listen so I didn't defend himself now. I didn't register it as a special a thing. Fan. He's a fake Mega Man fan. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm not gonna take this. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. You want to talk about Mega Man? I wasn't gonna talk about know. this, but I guess. No, I don't want. I guess now we're gonna do it. No, you called me out. Wait you you think you're so cool? You think you're such no, a hot I don't shot? Talk about Mega Man. Mega Mostly Man. I can't combat it with Phoenix Wright because there's no news. <laughs> Mega, the Capcom has officially announced that like Mega Man, the next game is happening. They haven't said what it is specifically. They haven't said if it's going to be like Mega Man 12 or if it's going to be like a new Mega Man X game. I would be interested to think that with all of the like they re- recently released the the Zero collection, which has Z- yeah. Mega Man ZX and Zero, and I feel like part of that would be could be saying, let's get everybody up to speed on the Mega Man X canon and Mega Man Zero canon so that when we make a new Mega Man X game, they have something to go off of because there hasn't been a game of, like, a main game in the series for so long. It's definitely not going to be Legends 3. They are going to wait a very long time before they jump back into that, if they ever do. Um, I'm but... pretty sure it's called the Mega Buster, Joe. You heard it here first. Now, in reference to what thing that I said, are you replacing with the Mega Buster? Mega Man Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't apologize. <laughs> Twice I've interrupted the podcast with nothing of use. <laughs> this is what I get for no He's longer. Mad at us now. See, He's not talking. See, Joe. Now, now you you've taken over the podcast from me, and I have nothing left. I <laughs> I, I have to come interrupt the podcast. I'm kind of alarmed by how he's not talking. I hope this is not a microphone issue. I hope this is. I hope it is because it'd be really funny. Well, I guess I'm going to be in charge of the podcast now. <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. What? Whoa. <laughs> well. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> that was my plan all along. <laughs> Draw him out of hiding by attempting to take over. <laughs> Anna, what is a cool video game that you've played? <laughs> Tell us. I'm currently playing the Untitled Goose game. Oh. oh, yeah, that came out and I was super interested in it. What is it? How is it? It's alright. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a good game. I like it so far. Sorry. I'm having fun being a goose running around. Are we going to have um, best new character of 2019? Oh, better. The goose. Goose. <laughs> oh. Hey. hey. Stop being a jerk, Mr. Groundskeeper. <laughs> <laughs> I think the opposite is happening. I think you're wrong, and this tulip is mine. Now. Untitled Goose Game is a game where you play as a goose and you you goof up people's lives as a goose because you're terrible. I think I'm great, and you're given no, you're given objectives to complete. I have, his hat. I have complete. his hat. I got it. <laughs> I have it. Run, goose, run, <laughs> run faster, run faster. I'm in the water now. Haha. <laughs> Oh god, He'll he's, never is he you. following me? He is not. We're good. Oh god, he's following me! In the water? Yeah! <laughs> he really wants that hat. Jeez, no! Play uh, by play commentary. Um, Diana. Yes? I want to hear more about this, this video game law thing that you're writing for school. Oh, okay. Like, what is it, what is it? What, is it an assignment? Is it... Um, so I'm on one of my law school's journals. Um, and so if they like my article, it could be published. Wow. Hey. Uh, which would be cool and all that. But yeah, I'm... Yeah, it sure would be cool to have an article about video games published <laughs> on the internet somewhere. I know. Huh? Can't even imagine, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm I'm on the administrative law journal. So basically I'm talking about... Basically anything is administrative law, as long as it's, like, regulated by the government or something. I don't know. Is were... there a law that isn't regulated by the government? I mean, like, as long as we're talking, like, a government agency, like, FTC, SEC. Okay, like... so you're talking about not, like, criminal not, law, No, 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 basically. no, no, not, like, criminal law. But, yeah, so I'm doing, um, I'm writing on loot boxes because in August, yes, August, I had to check, the FTC held a workshop on loot boxes and potential regulation schemes. I think I haven't read through all the transcripts yet. I'm working on it, but it shows that they're they're being really serious about wanting to get involved in regulating it. And a senator proposed a bill. He talked about it back in May, but I'm not sure if that's when he actually proposed the bill to ban loot boxes altogether. Um, wow, which would be interesting. And we wouldn't be the first. Um, other countries have already done it. I think, like, Netherlands and Belgium have banned them completely. <laughs> Australia has done a study that says they're basically psychologically similar to gambling. Stuff like that. I've done all the research. I'm not done with my outline yet. So how are they defining loot boxes in these cases? Because you could think of a lot of things that... You know, there's the classic thing where it's like literally a virtual box that you click a button on and random things come out of. Them. So I think, yes, I think that's mainly what we're looking at here. We're thinking like Overwatch, Fortnite style loot boxes. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I'd have to, I haven't seen the actual text of the bill yet. I'm not sure if it is online anywhere. If it is, I haven't found it yet and I've been looking. But I'm not sure how much it addresses microtransactions, but I know that when the senator announced the bill, like when he first started talking about it, he was ma he mainly kind of messed up the definition of <laughs> loot boxes and was <laughs> talking more about microtransactions um, wow. because he was started talking about Candy Crush. And I'm like, wait, 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 mm -hmm. wait, that's a different thing, <laughs> but OK. Um, but yeah, but people know what Candy Crush is. Yeah, everyone knows what Candy Crush is. It's it's a well, lot more prolific, especially with probably the audience of people he was talking I to. I think it's. Uh, hang on, I have the name of the bill somewhere. It's actually kind of funny. Um, it's like the protecting our children. Blah blah blah. Oh, it makes act. a word. Yeah, hang on, I can oh, find it. The Super Legal Good Law Act <laughs> of Good Vibes and Good Times. I'm just worried um, if they, like, phrase it in such a way that it includes everything up to, like, uh, raid drops or something in World of Warcraft, you know? Yeah, hang on, I'm, I'm pulling up one of my they articles They accidentally now. ban video <laughs> games. Uh, prote yeah. Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act. What? Um, what? what? Is this, like, a real thing that you can read? Or is that just the name of hang it? Hang on, I'm, I'm gonna click on this link and see if it's gonna take me to the actual bill or another article. Um... It would, if approved, prohibit video game companies from selling loot boxes to children under the age of 18. 
and make it unlawful for minor-oriented games to include pay-to-win mechanics. Hmm. Hmm. And it'll be a Man, financial pay to penalty. win sounds really broad. <laughs> yes, but... that's the main problem. I... The fact that it's targeted at minors, though, yes. is, is an interesting thing. And that's going to be thing. the problem, because arguably, yeah, all games. any game can be targeted at minors. Yeah. And, like, is it just a case of, do you have to pretend you're over 18, mm-hmm. and then that gets rid of your plausible deniability? I don't know. Or the other like, well, story I'm keeping an eye on... Yeah, Nintendo was forced to pull two games that contained microtransactions, which I'm assuming are, yeah, Pocket Camp and Fire Emblem Heroes, hmm. um, because this article was written <laughs> in May. I see. They had to pull them from Belgium altogether, because <laughs> Belgium outlawed microtransactions. Wow. Because... Not to not to harp on Pokemon Masters again too much, but another thing that I thought was interesting was that like if you make a certain amount of purchases, you get a bonus where you do get to pick. Like you just oh. get to pick a character that you want if you make a certain number of purchases. That's interesting. And I don't, I don't, I can't even begin to talk about it. How moral it is. I don't, I don't want to get into that because that's too nebulous for me. I don't have enough of a frame of reference for it. Mm-hmm. But I wonder. How that works with the lo- – because at a certain point it's saying, hey, you know, because it's not it, it, it's not necessarily a one-time thing. It's like if you spend enough – if you do this enough times, you don't even necessarily have to spend money. So I think you really sh- need to spend money in order to get enough gems to do it. Yeah, which is why but I think not like, maybe they're structuring this the way that they are. But if you if you do the, the gachapon enough times – in a certain time period, you just get to pick a character that you want. And it's, it, again, it's a crazy amount. So, like, you basically have to spend money. But I, I don't know if that changes things where it's like, well, you're actually, they're not spending money to get the characters, you're spending money to earn towards this thing. <laughs> I cannot find the actual text of this bill anywhere. I am still looking for it. But the way that most people are defining it is just generic pay to win. So if it's actually defined like that in the bill and no one goes in and fixes it, uh, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, pay to win is t- way it's too broad, broad because, like like I was saying with Pokemon Masters, like, I don't think paying money really helps you win that much, but it does a little bit. Which I'm sure is the argument that people are going to make. And is it – because part of it, too, is that – I think a lot of time when I hear about people complaining about pay to win, though not always, because sometimes it is about like the actual video game that you're playing. A big part of that is when you're playing against other real human people, right? Yes. But in Pokemon Masters, you only ever play cooperatively with other human people. Yeah, so maybe that'll also be a factor. Again, this this is all super new, so right. we're, there's going to be time to work out the kinks. And obviously, this bill is in its like very early stages. I doubt mm-hmm. we're going to see anything on it for a bit. And then even when we do, I'm sure it's going to be lobbying against it from, you know, mm-hmm. all the big technology companies. I think um, that's that's what I predict is probably going to happen next. And I hope it happens while I'm writing this because it would be super interesting to talk about, which unfortunately means leaving a lot of my article up in the air as I write, which is a problem. <laughs> um, and I'm sure my editors are not going to like that. <laughs> but... I think it's really important to talk about this stuff as it comes out. And a lot of people are writing on this. Um, I mean, people who are concerned with video game law, it's like the most popular thing to write about right now. Mm -hmm. But I was like, hi, I'm really cool. Um, I like this topic and I want to write about it. And they were like, (laughs) okay. (laughs) So Did you actually lead with I'm really cool? No, I I led with um, I have contacts in the video game law industry and I could probably interview them and get unique takes. And they were like, that sounds cool. And I was like, yeah. It does. I hope I can follow through. I don't have contacts in the video game industry, but I do have glasses. Oh my wow. God, I hate you so much. How dare you? Joe, that was my job. I'm the one making the bad jokes in this podcast. I will not relinquish <laughs> this part of the podcast to you. You gave me full control. <laughs> that includes jokes. I will not be upstaged. Uh, so that's all I have on that for now. I mean, I can, I've only outlined the first two sections so we're not we're not going very far yet, but my outline's due next week, so I should probably finish that at some point. <laughs> it does sound, I mean, it, it's very interesting and relevant, um, especially goal. with the big push of mobile games. We haven't really talked about it because um, none of us have played it, but they also came out with the Mario Kart mobile game. Yes. Um, which people have opinions about, and that's all I know yeah, so me far. Yeah, 
Um, we'll probably talk about it on the next podcast once more people have had a chance to play it. Mm-hmm. Speaking of talking to us on Discord... Um, Half an hour ago. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, The people listening to this can ask us questions. And uh, we did have a question. I feel like I'm jumping into the question segment, though, instead of just transitioning into me talking about Monster Hunter. But... It's it's free form. It's a flow. This is a free form flowy podcast. Hacks and Slash has so much structure. I've also been listening to the RPG cast, which oh. has a ton of structure. Let's just be loose and free form with it. Jetty, yeah. tell me about this thing about Monster Hunter from the Discord. Okay, so uh, Tony A for Axe Stark from our Discord uh, asks, who's gone by many names? Yes, yes, Axe yeah. Attorney. Sorry, I'm I'm sitting here. I'm like reading what it says on the screen. Um, <laughs> I was trying to determine if there was an actual question or if it was just, how do you like Monster Hunter? Speaking of which, how has your monster hunting been going? At Jetty. You could at Jetty me. I'm there. You can talk to me <laughs> on Discord. You're there. You're here. We're on Discord right now. We are on the podcast. Um, yes. And so the point is, um, I tried Monster Hunter and I didn't really care that much. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. So where where this all begins is actually uh, a couple of months ago, I was looking for a fantasy co-op video game. It seems to basically exclusively be uh, MMOs. Yeah, that would have been my first inclination. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm not really interested both in the time and in the setup of MMOs, like uh, a lot of fetch quests and like daily grinding and stuff. Um, I'm not really interested. So I was like, okay, well, I know there's games like Borderlands, which is a sci-fi co-op local multiplayer game. Um, Is there anything that I'm missing in the fantasy realm? Uh, and Monster Hunter was kind of the big one that people were suggesting to me. And Mm -hmm. it is very popular. Technically, it does hit the items of fantasy, co-op, RPG, but um, I guess I'm not really interested in, like, the primary boss hunting aspect and also, I don't know, the the style of, like, quote, action-oriented gameplay did not appeal to me. I played... um, a demo of the one that was on the switch and i don't think they have a demo of the pc one uh monster hunter world uh yeah. but i watched a whole lot of uh videos of it and um it seemed kind of like it was set up similar to an mmo that you play by yourself i mean you can play with other people well but i i, I just mean that it's uh it's not an mmo uh it is an um M- <laughs> o or whatever <laughs> it is a minimally multiplayer online role-playing game um so yeah sadly uh I, my, my quest continues for a local co-op fantasy game so what are you looking for jaddy so maybe our podcast listeners can help you okay actually and this segues beautifully into what games have i been playing recently oh you already figured it out huh Hamtaro, Ham Hams Unite. No, uh, sorry, this is not. <laughs> this is not waking up with Game Cola. My morning live stream from seven a.m. to nine a.m. Eastern Mondays and Fridays. Uh, but actually, on my own time, I have been playing uh, Ease Eight, Lacrimosa of Dana. This. The, How is this what? spelled? How is this what? possibly the, spelled? Yeah, it's just <laughs> the letter Y, the letter S. It's pronounced Ease. Oh right stupidest name so i'm ease, sorry ease kingdom of donna yeah whatever um <laughs> uh so ease donna no queen <laughs> um hold on actually one second i i have a permanent tab for this right here <laughs> got it 1993 i hop we get a video game <laughs> I think this was used as a thumbnail for a different podcast. <laughs> Today is Thursday, March 4th, 1993, Squiggly Line. I hop we get a video game, and it's own we've had it before, and we beat it, it's fun. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've shown this image on a yeah. previous podcast, and it's named after this image. Oh, man. Sorry, just 
people <laughs> sometimes when they meet me in real life question if I like why I consider myself a nerd. What what about me would be nerdy? And it's just like you didn't know me March fourth, nineteen ninety three. Thursday. Yes, today is Thursday. Um for those listening at home, uh it has a crudely drawn map titled as such uh <laughs> labeled with all the key points it's it's the map screen from ease three wanders from ease um so like i have a long history as long as an american could because i don't think they released any of the other games in america <laughs> but the point is when i saw that this was available on the switch i was like okay let's get a uh well i i would I would call it a triple A title in comparison to my indie games um that I usually play. Yeah, triple A in the Jetty yeah, sphere. <laughs> um this is probably still gaming outside the mainstream, uh all the same. But the point is I go into it expecting a fantasy adventure. And it's a little different and it took a bit of getting used to because like it takes place on a deserted island and I'm kind of like Eh. about like the uh the atmosphere or whatever like it's not the fantasy adventure that i was looking for as much uh but it's a magic island adventure but what it does get like really exactly that like keys in on and does like an excellent job at is exploration Mm. Yeah, I think I've seen some gameplay of Ease, and I think it's, like, got a very particular, like, map system. Yeah, I don't know if any of the other games in the series do this, but, um, yeah, like, like you're on this deserted island that no one's explored before. So, like, you have your little, uh, your castaways camp that is your home base, and then you explore all around it, and, like, uh, you find other castaways who are lost around the island, and you fight monsters, and, like, uh, it's really well balanced that, like, I've never had to grind. There's, like, uh, item crafting, which is always something that I hate, uh, but they manage to do it in such a way that, like, they do a really good job of balancing it, and I am very much enjoying the exploration and... Yeah, like, there's not a lot of backtracking, and when there is, uh, there's a really handy fast travel option and so on. Like, they, they've they managed to, like, file off all the rough edges that I see in a lot of games that I'm like, oh, cool, an exploration game. And then I'm like, well, I hate this. <laughs> there's too much backtracking. <laughs> I hate item crafting and so on. Um, but I've been really impressed. But what would be cool, like legitimately the perfect game for me is if this had local multiplayer mm. you want a secret of mana type i was thing. just gonna say is that this basically would be ease eight lacrimosa of mana <laughs> um yeah like essentially that's what it is because it is like action oriented gameplay but um a very simple you mash a whole bunch and then you hit r and then you hit some other button, and then it does, like, a move for you instead of having to worry about, like, combos or too precise movement or anything. Um, mm. I don't know. It's not Dark Souls. <laughs> well, segueing into something I wanted to talk about, Dark Souls. which is... Cause I w- <laughs> no, not Dark Souls. Because um, I don't know if you guys heard... But the, especially, well, I do know if you guys heard because I mentioned it before we started the podcast. <laughs> but I don't know if you had heard before I mentioned it before the start of the podcast was that uh, Nintendo Switch Online people oh. finally got something that we should have probably yes. had a lot earlier, honestly, which is the SNES Online mm. Library. Yeah. Yeah. So you could get SNES games for free with your Nintendo Switch Online account, and you can play them online with friends. And that's what I wanted to connect it to, because it seems like Secret of Mana would be perfect for Do that. Do they have it? Obviously, I don't think... I think there might be issues, because I don't think the licensing of that would be as easy as what they have on there already. Um, but they have some... That was just something I was thinking about when you were talking about. Like, they could... Because the problem with Secret of Mana is that, like, 
Yeah, local co-op. I don't know. I, yeah, three-player co-op. Like, when are you going to get like consistently have three friends who can come over and play these days? When you're when and I'm talking about like adults are the people who would be interested in this. Like, obviously, if you like have family, brothers and sisters your own age, then like it, and that who could has work. The multi tap anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think I think a game like that would actually be able to work on Nintendo Switch Online, where you can do online multiplayer Secret of Mana. Actually, um, or how would you say that the Super Nintendo uh, for Switch is different than Virtual Console would be or would have been or whatever? Well, you don't get to pick the video games first okay. of all. Yeah. <laughs> That's a major component. Oh right, it's like all or nothing, right? Yeah. So they have a selection. And with the NES one, they would release, like, four... Well, they would release two. You'd get two new games and then two, like, special modes for other games. Usually it would, like, let you play starting with all the power-ups or, like, let you play starting from the final boss. Like, it would it would do something like that. You'd get those little yeah. things. Um, and, like, obviously if you stop paying the monthly fee, I don't think you get to keep playing the video games yeah. anymore. So that's that's part of the issue, too. And also, I don't think it's exclusively, but I think it's mostly, like, just Nintendo s- stuff, whereas the Virtual Console had, like, stuff from everywhere. So there's probably a list of all of them somewhere. I can't actually type on my computer right now, but you could look it up. I've been playing uh, Link to the Past. <laughs> no reaction. All right. Classic. <laughs> that's the only game I'm really interested in right now that's on the SNES is that really on there? Okay, there you are. I was—I figured you were the one who had most recently played yeah, it, so I, I didn't thought know you would have comments. There. I haven't really looked <laughs> extensively yeah. at the. Yeah, the I've been—it's—I've pl- been playing it. Uh, so, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I just finished it on stream like a month ago mm. or so. Right, probably. which is why I decided to play that one because <laughs> I figured playing it on Game Cola Stream would be redundant. Um, I mean, because there are can. other. Old well, there are other old SNES games that I'd like to like do for the first time on stream. I think that would be fun. Um, but you literally just did that, so I figured that would be a safe one to start with because mm-hmm. I wanted to start w- just play one. I just got to Dungeon Six after being lost about it for a very long time. <laughs> I don't remember what the numbers of any of them. <laughs> it's the one that's in the desert area oh, okay. in the, that's in the real six. world. Six? Did I say seven? Oh, no, no, I get. I meant six. Oh, wait. No, you said six. In the... I thought okay. that one was five, but whatever. I don't remember. No, it's definitely mm. six. I mean, it's been a very long um, time since I've played the game, so... Screw that um, one. Whatever it is, I probably hated it. <laughs> it's the one where the, the mossy vines everywhere, and you have to use magic. And I didn't have mag- enough magic to use the medallion that you need to use to open it oh, up. Yeah, I hated so that I had to go so find much. magic somewhere. So I haven't even started really playing it, and you're not giving me good vibes on it, no, Jay. Um, it's one of those ones where, like, uh, I played this game a lot circa 1995, somewhere around there. And, um, yeah, this was my, my least favorite location. So enjoy. Yeah, so far the one that I didn't like the most was the ice one. I don't like uh. it when video games decide that the way to make things more difficult is to just make things hard to control. (laughs) That's not good. I said this about Mario Maker 2 in an earlier podcast, I'm pretty sure, but I'm being consistent about it. It's not fun, and it's not good, and it's just frustrating when you're trying to go down a staircase and you just keep sliding (laughs) to the left of it and then sliding to the right of it and then sliding to the left of it. And there are also parts where they expect... You don't have to, but it seems like they're trying to get you to go through, like, one-by-one one sections in between spike blocks. And, like, that's just not – you can't do that. It's that's not viable. Not... No. I've only been lost a couple times, though. Um, one was trying to get to Dungeon 6 because – just spoiler if you care about not knowing how to get to Dungeon 6. You have to take the bird. <laughs> oh, and it's just like, oh. how was I supposed to know that you had to take the bird to get to the place? The bird, you would think, would take you to, like, a neutral pl- spot of each area. But no, it takes you to a place that's only accessible by bird. <laughs> and that's never been a thing before. Also, another part of it that I think, it has these, like, whirlpool warps, right? Yeah. Where, like, 
there's parts where you can swim in and it'll warp you. And the problem is, is that if you, if you make that exist, then anytime you don't know how to get somewhere, you have this thought in the back of your mind of like, well, maybe there's just a magic <laughs> whirlpool warp somewhere in the world that will take me there. Yeah. Because there's no there's no thread to like how those work. It's just a random warp that takes you somewhere. So that was part of that was me. I was like, is there some body of water somewhere randomly on the map that I need to jump into? So that was frustrating. I also had it, this one wasn't as bad, but it was still like not super clearly conveyed. Once you get the grappling hook, that's how you can get to like the rest of the dark world. Um, but the place that you can, like, grapple over is very not clearly <laughs> marked. Mm, yeah, okay. This is all giving me terrible flashbacks that I didn't need. <laughs> <laughs> but do you agree? Is any of this tracking with people who've played this video game? Yes. Yes, I agree. Okay. That it, Did you also struggle trying to find these places? I Yes, I struggled the entire game. My chat held my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other thing that the SNES online thing has is like the replay thing where you can hold the L and R buttons down and you can just like go back in time Prince of Persia style. <laughs> what? I was going to ask actually if there was like save states. And the, yeah, there's also save states, but that's been, that's been a thing since virtual console yeah, yeah, yeah. 3DS and Wii U, I think too. But now you get four save slots instead of just one which I think was what it was originally. And honestly, like, I try not to use it very much, but sometimes it is nice where it's just like, oh, I accidentally used the medallion and used up half my magic. I just need to not have <laughs> done that because all it's going to do is waste time for me trying to find magic yeah. again. It's not a skill thing. So I will, like, I'll play things back like that. And I also use it as, like, a checkpoint system for the bosses because there's really no point in going through the whole dungeon again just to fight the boss again. Yep. Like there's, there's no increase in skill, and that's I think something that gaming in general has realized over time. Because the whole point of the boss is to try to figure out the boss and not to remember how to fight the boss as you go through the dungeon over and over again. So I, those are the main things that I've used it for. Just like dumb little mistakes that would are just time wasters. But like other than that, like it is like it is a good video game. I, I don't want to just spend the whole time ragging on it. Um, <laughs> it is a good game. I loved playing it. I guess part of it is, like, because the rest of it is pretty solid, the parts that are bad really stick out. But, yeah, I've been yeah. enjoying it. I've been enjoying I've been, you know, trying to be better about exploring instead of just trying to make a beeline for wherever the thing is. I still haven't gotten the net. I know that the net exists. I don't know where it is. And I ha I thought I would just randomly come across it by now. But I haven't. So, uh, I think, do you want me to tell you? No, don't tell me. <laughs> okay. I'm not looking up anything about this game. The only thing I know about the game is the one dungeon that I saw you play through with the moth guy. <laughs> I have to cut that, Diane. Sorry, you could cut my audio. <laughs> yeah, the, the moth also was not super great but that was another one where like part of it was they had the they had the spike things that are like you can't really dodge like you're not really given the space to dodge it and it's on like a weird conveyor belt thing right yes it's yeah. a bunch of conveyor so belts like the whole point it's not really that hard of a boss fight if you're just talking about the moth it's just the stuff around the moth that's just making it difficult for you to control that's the challenge and that i don't i don't think that's very fun i don't like challenges like that and there's other just little conveyance things that I think have just been updated over time. Things where the the challenge is figuring out what it's trying to get you to do rather than actually be... Or like, you know, there's times where it's like, is this actually doing damage or... And it's just taking a long time or am I doing something wrong? That was another thing that I had. I don't remember which boss it was, but I remember I was fighting one boss and it's like, I'm hitting this with the sword many times and it doesn't seem to be working, but nothing else works. Hmm. Dilemma. Yeah. But it's it's been fun. And I'll, it'll, I'll have more opinions on it once I finish it, I think. Um, Diana, what games have you been playing in recent times? I know the answer, but tell me anyway. Well, uh, to the surprise of absolutely no one... Uh, I have been playing uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and I don't remember how much I we talked about this last month. Uh, probably a lot. So I just actually don't remember. Is that Fire Emblem Three Houses? 
Yes. Are we, uh, so it's not Fire Emblem Three Houses? No. <laughs> no. It's three houses. Because there's three people. They're not houses, though. They have houses. Well, yes, Diana. Most people do. Shut up. Most you know people. what I meant. <laughs> Gosh, you set me up so perfectly I for know. that. That was funny. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, continue. I've made my good uh, joke. I don't know. What else do you want me to say about it? It's great. I don't think you actually really talked about Did it that much last uh, time. I think we mentioned it, and I, th- I think you wanted to save it because you wanted to play more of the game oh, before you really got into it. I finished uh, two roots now. So. Okay. I've Two to go. Of the three? You finished two of three houses? Yes, but there's there's four routes total. Mm, the secret route. The secret All houses house. at the same time. Uh, yes, so I, I like it. It's fun. It's a good romp. I love Dimitri um, a lot. To the surprise of, again, absolutely no one. Because he is the main uh, prince of the game. Uh, and I have a type. But... <laughs> It's it's really interesting. I really like all of the new things that they added. I like the structure of it. It reminds me of Persona, so it makes me happy. I was going to ask you about that, because it, it has that same, like, gameplay loop of, like, there's an RPG gameplay section, and then there's, like, a talk to everyone section. Yes. So, like, it works in that you have a, basically a calendar, you do a month at a time, and every, like, Saturday you can choose an activity between, like exploring the monastery where you're at or having a seminar or going out to you know grind and do battles and then on Sundays you have classes where you can train your students in whatever you so choose blah 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 and at the end of the month you do the main story battle for the month um so yeah it's a lot of a fair amount of freedom I like it you get to choose your students majors which I feel like is like an ethical (laughs) issue there uh, I mean, well, you can also just let them do what they want. Right, but like that's what I'm saying. You're given the opportunity, and it is probably your, in your best interest in the video game to choose your student's life path. Oh, yeah. Yeah, someone who I know who's playing this, um, he has meticulously planned everything. Like, he knows what classes he wants them to be and and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, I just... I just let them do what they want. Like, if they come to me and are like, I want to focus on act skills, I'm like, yes, you go. And then they come to me the next week and are like, changed my mind, want to focus on writing and reason. I'm like, yes, do it. Like, I support them in whatever they choose. I think you meant, I think you said writing, like with a pen and I reason. Meant writing. But I heard writing. 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 Yes, like horses. Is it writing and reason? So you're just sitting on a horse, think, going, Reason, okay, reason is magic. It's magic. It's faith and reason. It was just an example. I'm on a horse. I'm going to leave. <laughs> I'm tired no. of your shenanigans. Um. So here's the thing that I got confused about Fire Emblem Three Houses, and maybe this is a spoiler, but I thought, like, isn't the point of the game that the three houses don't really like each other very much? <laughs> After the time skip. Uh, that's in the trailer. Yes. The, it's the, in, everyone is, knows uh, about the time uh, skip. Um, yeah, everybody knows. I think I'm only it. talking about spoilers that are in the trailer for the video um, game. Because I, have no, I haven't seen any other part of the video game, so I can't possibly spoil anything else. Kind of. Yeah. But, basically. but then you can also steal people. Oh, yes. I am good at that. I stole everyone. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult. You have to plan ahead. Because they won't come to your house unless you have a good relationship with them. And also you have to be... Unless your mom calls their mom. Uh, and then yeah, they have to be high level... Or you have to be high level in skills that they care about. Mm. So they'll tell you what those skills are when you try and recruit them. It's like, they look kind of interested in joining your class, but you really need to be higher in sword and flying. Or something. And before they'll join I wish you. I was higher in sword. I wish I had sword good. Actually, um, I did want to say, I forgot to mention it uh, while I was talking about Monster Hunter. A, a very large reason for me 
deciding against Monster Hunter is the concept of paying, uh, you know, 60 bucks twice to play multiplayer. Oh, because someone else has to pay yeah. 60 bucks. That's, that's fair. So, okay, is... What is your role in this video game? Are you, like, a teacher? Yes. Are you an advisor? Are you uh, the head of the house? Yes, and also a head a of the professor. house. professor. But you're also an advisor, it seems like, to everyone, though. Yeah, so basically how it works is the beginning of the game, you choose which house you want to be the head of, and then... Based on what? Like, what is it? Whatever you how want. How do you... But I mean, like, do you know anything about these different places, or you just got to pick your favorite color? You get to meet all of the characters beforehand. Okay. So you can choose um, who you think you'll like best. And then uh, it's implied that you probably have lessons with the other classes also, but you're mostly in charge of your your class, your house. Your homeroom. Yeah, your (laughs) homeroom. But they fight each other, though. Only sometimes. The video game trailer made it seem like you were usually fighting each other, like, to death. Not right away. I'm just saying that this doesn't seem like a very sustainable education model. When you, well, uh, spoilers. (laughs) I have a feeling that maybe that's how the story of the game ends up panning out. I mean, it's complicated. (laughs) That it agrees with me. The only time you fight when you're in school, you, you are not fighting to the death. It's just a fake battle. Mm. Um, and you're just It's like, just a prank, bro. Yeah, you're just like having fun. And yeah, it's not like a real a real battle. Do you think people are going to do the three houses like the Harry Potter houses? Oh, I'm sure people already have. I mean, I haven't seen it. I just it, feel like but... I would have heard about it by now. I don't know. I'm sure it's happened. I also haven't uh seen anything, but I'm sure it exists. I do know that they just released a uh set of dlc that has additional outfits uh for all the characters which is fun and one of them is quote loungewear which looks like gym clothes and the (laughs) black eagles ones are red because red is their house color but they're not called they don't have red in their name i don't care whatever it doesn't matter um (laughs) so everyone was making jokes that they looked like uh the wildcats from high school musical and there (laughs) were a lot of memes going around about that for a while Actually, I'm thinking about it more, and I think part of the, in order to have, like, that sort of component of, like, everybody identifying with a certain thing, it has to be, like, to some extent out of your hands, right? There has to be some sort of level of it where it's out of your control. It's just who you are, right? Yeah. So, like, there's a sorting hat, and you take the online quiz in Harry Potter. If you're an astrologist... The moon decides what you are. You don't get to pick. I don't remember them going online in the movies. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) I don't. You keep making references to things that I've said, said and you don't understand that I don't. They went online. (laughs) They did did go online. I don't remember the critical scene where Harry goes online and (laughs) and does a survey. Didn't you play the video game? (laughs) That thing was all internet. I'm pretty sure that it happened. Uh, maybe it was in the books, and I only ever watched the movies. So <laughs> it happened in the video game. Harry goes online. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the internet. Um. Anybody here like Tetris? Yeah, I love I've Tetris. I played Tetris. Yeah. Historically speaking, what about the maximum Tetris? Nope. Maximum over Tetris. <laughs> That sounds like too much Tetris. (laughs) If you don't know, Tetris 99 had an update where if you've gotten a Tetris Maximus, you've gotten first place in playing Tetris against 98 other people, you get to play in a special mode that only has people who have done that before. (laughs) And it is crazy in there, guys. (laughs) I know I have a raging ego. (laughs) We, we know. Which is why I try to only use it for things that don't matter. <laughs> Which is why I'm going to use it currently to dunk on all of you because I've gotten 12th place in the Tetris Maximus arena because I'm just that good at Tetris. Wow. Congratulations. I'm so impressed. I'm so good at Tetris, you guys. Nice work, Joseph. It's so important that you know how good at Tetris I am. I always knew you could. I'm proud of you. You've come so <laughs> Thank far. Thank you. 
back in the weeb days when I was playing Tetris in an old cinder block Game Boy and very bad at it because I had no forward thinking <laughs> skills. Now today, beating hundreds of people at Tetris wow. and only having to pay $10 a year to do it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Clearly, I am the smart person in this exchange of goods and services. God, I love Tetris. Tetris is such a good game. It is a very good video game. Yeah. And that's why it's lasted so long, I guess. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody else go. No. Good. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. You can't just be cool with me about Tetris on the podcast. That's it. I'm turning this podcast around. So now now you have to continue talking about uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Then I have to talk again about... <laughs> yeah, we'll have to go backwards. Eight. Yeah, and so on. <laughs> I think I'll just end the podcast and then we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to it. Well, Anna out. didn't talk about... I thought Anna talked about Untitled Goose Game. That was her thing. Did you have more? I play games. <laughs> like oh, did Minecraft you have more games? And uh, Link's Awakening. <laughs> My sister came to visit, and we went shopping. And both of us were just like, no, we should not buy more things today. And then immediately we're just like, hey, if you buy this game, I'll buy this game. And so we both bought Link's Awakening and played it for most of the rest of the day. (laughs) So the new Link's Awakening, that's all clay goopy. It's beautiful. Is it a good video game? Yes. Cam's actually been playing it more than I have. I think I said this when it was first announced, but it was sort of the thing where it's like, I didn't realize that people liked Link's Awakening so much because it was the sort of thing where they announced it and I was like, oh, I guess that's nice, but I don't know if there's that much interest in it. And then everyone was like, Link's Awakening is my favorite Zelda game. I'm so glad it's getting a remake. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. I was hoping for Link to the Past to be remade before Link's Awakening, but... Well, I think that's what Link Between Worlds... Yeah. It wasn't a remake, but I think it was, like, in that category of yeah. we're going to cash in on the fan fan liking the old game of this. But these are good games that I've been playing. And also Untitled Goose Game. Pretty great. Had a great time just pissing off this garden man. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I've done for a month. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything they want to talk about before I end the podcast? I will very briefly say that I think the popularity of Link's Awakening is due to the timing of the DX release. Because, like, um, I think I've discussed before that uh, Final Fantasy VII is a very popular game largely because it hit when, like, games were kind of on their way up and a lot of kids were in middle school. And so basically everyone in middle school at the time played Final Fantasy VII as their first RPG. And uh, it was in this, like, Pokemon Final Fantasy VII sort of period where, like, people are actually playing games now, and then they release this Zelda game right then. And uh, I think, what, when was Ocarina of Time? 98? Was Ocarina of Time 98? I thought it was 90... Oh, no, you're right. Ocarina of Time was 98, and uh, Majora's Mask was 2000, I think. Yeah, so, like, um, you'll also see that Ocarina of Time is a lot of people's most favorite Zelda game. And Mm -hmm. I I think that it's all the same sort of deal, is that, like, there's an entire generation of people who were hitting games at that exact moment. And uh, that's where the Mm. largest portion of the popularity comes from. What do you think that's going to be for us? The college kids. We sports. Jetty, with what? your with your infinite wisdom yeah. about us, the college kids. Well, I feel like you would already know what it was at this point. <laughs> right, that's why I'm asking you. What do you think it's going to be? I don't know. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jetty, how old do you think we are? Yeah, how old do you think we are, Jetty? <laughs> Hold on. Um, don't try to math it out. No. How old it's, it's have how you old been? How old do we sound? Yeah, how old age, have you been considering us during this? We're about the same yeah. age. You, 23? Daddy, <laughs> that is absolutely correct. I'm 23. Yes. 
I, I'm 24, but we're, we've, we yeah, are all born 24 within next month. the same year. Okay, so like, within the same my, my way span. of judging this is... <laughs> yes, please tell. <laughs> I knew that alcohol references started being a thing a couple of years ago. <laughs> so I was like, well, they're at least 21. Bold of you to assume that I was 21 when I started well, yeah, yeah, alcohol theoretically. References. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but, um... When did we write that last fan fiction? I wasn't even 21 yet. <laughs> yeah, no. We were not 21 when we wrote that. <laughs> we were in college, yes. I'm pretty sure. But I don't think we were 21. I was six months away from being 21. <laughs> no, that means I wasn't. So you're 23. How old would you have been in middle school? So what? I don't know what was popular uh, in, what, the 2007? Hold on, I can go and I can look at what the 2017 Video Game Awards Part 2. Uh, what what are going to be our, like, big games? Oh. I think it's already kind of happening, though, as part of it, Hold too. On, wait. Cause... Uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Yes! <laughs> that's it! Yep, Bioshock. That's, that's the game. Um, I'm judging this based on Game Cola's 2017... Best Ow. game of ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Which was what? Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. <laughs> of course it was. Ah, I see. <laughs> it does interestingly make sense now that you would have been growing up with Phoenix Wright during the period that other people were growing up with um, Link's Awakening. <laughs> it's true. I mean, we're yeah, kind of already right. getting the the remakes now for our generation. Well, a little bit. Yeah. I mean... We're just about hitting it. Yeah. Because, like, Crash and Spyro is, like, just before yeah. us, I feel like. And now we're getting, uh, which I'm surprised I haven't talked about this before now, and I know we're running short on yeah, time, sorry. so I'm not going to go was... too too much into it, but Xenoblade oh, yeah. is getting a remake, and I yeah. could not be more excited about it, like, at all. I cried. And this... Sino Pokemon remakes are like kind of overdue, honestly. Oh, yeah. I ran the math, and it's been the it's been well over a couple years past when the, we usually would get a remake. I think part of that is because Let's Go, which, if you think about it, may be the remakes of Fire Red and Leaf Green, yeah, sort so of, we could. which is just about when I started playing video games. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm trying to think, and I feel like there hasn't been stuff there's been stuff that i knew about right like i knew about crash and i knew about spyro but like all these game series that have been started getting remade with stuff that like had like some of their final original series entries like their threes and their fours of the games coming out when i was playing video games so we're just now getting to the point where it's our nostalgia that's being (laughs) too. (laughs) i did just realize that you guys are 10 years younger than me that's a little scary (laughs) <laughs> you just realized? I never thought about it in that context before. That's my favorite That's thing not to remind new- Paul is that he's ten years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that's changed though, Jenny. No. Like we've always been this young. And and that's another thing to think about is that technically the difference was greater before, percentage wise. Are you listening to this Game Cola podcast right now? And are you thinking to yourself, I'm in high school and I want to write about video games? <laughs> Hey. <laughs> or talk about video games on a Guess podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or make fun of video game fan fiction on a podcast. Yeah. Or be play an RPG on a podcast. Those are all other options that I would have control over. <laughs> you hey. don't have to be 16. You can be much older. You can be as young or old as, as you want. Mm, I don't think as young or old <laughs> as you want. Okay. I think there's probably Within some... I don't know where it is. There is some lower limit I mean, we, somewhere out there. I mean, we do have to accept you, so, like... You need to be try. capable of writing. We won't, mm-hmm. you know, outright reject anyone until we see their work. <laughs> and the thank you for listening to this. End, end it. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> you for li- thank you for listening. Thank you for listening <laughs> to... Ended. The Game Cola <laughs> Podcast. I'm trying. You keep interrupting me. Find us on YouTube. GC.net, the letter G, the letter C, the word dot, and the word net. I almost said the letter G, the letter C, the word P, the word C, which is no. not correct. That is the hashtag, <laughs> the hashtag the GCPC, which you can do on our tweet. You can use the tweet number. Oh. I'm stealing your joke, Jetty. Yes. How does it feel? How does it feel, Jetty? It's a Just bit more natural coming stolen. from me. <laughs> 
The tweet number, uh, the GCPC. Tell your friends about the podcast. Um, someone reviewed the podcast. They rated it five stars. And don't wow. think I don't appreciate you. I know we, we went from nineteen. We went from nineteen reviews or ratings to twenty. Wow! Whoa! Oh my gosh. Which is like the you're the real MVP. you're the real MVP. Yeah. You must be listening because why else would you have done this? Why would why else would you rate it? So thank you. Unless I accidentally did it on my phone. I don't think that's the case though. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. If it turns out it was you all along. <laughs> No one has to know that. Um, yes, find us on Discord. There's a link in the podcast article and on our Twitter. I finally put it there like a responsible adult. Uh, programming notes. We're going to have the Haction Slash season finale uh, this month. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then guess what's happening after that? Jetty. What? What is that? Oh, are we getting back hey, to the RPG cast? <laughs> we mean, oh, are we getting back to? I've talked to you about this. Yeah. I'm not springing this on you. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing that's coming back. Remember it. We'll be we'll be doing the Secret of Mana again. We'll be finishing it. So, oh, yay! if you wanna if you want to uh, catch back up on it, that's what I've been doing. I've been listening to old episodes. And guys, guess what? They're actually very good. <laughs> I have a hundred charisma. You have a hundred charisma. It's great. Some of my highlights so far were Harper crying at the plight of the um, Moogles. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, yeah, I think it was the Moogles. Yeah. Even though she could not understand what they were saying. <laughs> yeah. The time where I it, peer pressured Valor into throwing his sword at an enemy, it and worked. the time where someone said that we defeated the Witch Alini, and I said one entire Alini, and everybody laughed for five <laughs> minutes for some reason. <laughs> That's not even funny. I know. I said that in the podcast. <laughs> But here, I wish I could remember the context of that. <laughs> well, you can find out the context of it by going to the game called iTunes and looking all at all of the whatever Secret of Mana. That's the name of it. Uh, RPG Cast episodes. Cool. And also Twitch. Jay's been doing the streams. He mentioned it earlier. Oh yeah, the, join the yeah. waking up with Game Cole. It's pretty neat. Join me. Diana doesn't uh, show up though. Seven a.m. Listen to nine a.m. Listen. EST. I'm listening. It's like really early for me. Or late. <laughs> True. <laughs> Depending on your perspective. <laughs> it's late if you don't go to sleep. Just pull an all nighter to watch Game Cola live on Twitch, Diana. I, Come on. I'm, I'm pretty in sure. Law school. <laughs> yeah, I'm don't law sure. school people pull all nighters all the time? Not yet. Talk to me again in two weeks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this Friday I'm going to be wrapping up uh, Hamtaro Ham Hems Unite. Yay. Hamtaro, I'm trying to figure Ham Hems, out. Untie. You can. You can come on the Discord and tell me what game I should play next. Exciting. Let's end the podcast. Let's end it. Bye. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Have a wonderful time of day. Goodbye. Wherever it is, whenever it is, you are listening to this, the Game Call Podcast. <laughs> hashtag the GZPC. Goodbye. Bye. I bye. said bye like five times. <laughs> <laughs>